Hello students, how are you? I hope you are all in good health and ready to learn. I'm Miss Penny. Today we are going to discuss about the life cycle of plants. Are you ready? Let's get started. Now, I have five kinds of plants here. This one, this, this, and this. Now, let's arrange the plant development based on the, their different stages of growth. Can you? Let's do it together. Which one is the first stage? Yes. And then the second one? Correct. And then the third one? Yes, correct. And then the last is the adult plant with the flower. Yay! Now it's the time for us to discuss more about the life cycle of plants. Let's start it. Do you still remember what a plant needs to survive? You have learned it in the previous grade. Yes, they need air. And then, like, they also need water, nutrients, and warmth. As we know, the parts of a plant have their special function. Look at this picture. Do you know what is the function of this part? The roots absorb water from the soil and also keep the plant in the ground. How about this part? The leaves make food through photosynthesis. How about this? This is the stem. The stem have function. It transports water and nutrients to all parts. I have a question for you. Why do plants reproduce? Do you know why? Okay. As we know, living things do not live forever. They will die one day. To ensure survival and continuity of their own kind, they need to reproduce. Most of plants reproduce from seeds. However, there are some that do not reproduce from seeds. They have other ways to produce young such as moss and algae they reproduce through spores while potato and ginger they reproduce through buds how about this bryophyllum they reproduce on the leaf Do you know what happens in the life cycle of a flowering plant? Let's discuss them. Look at this picture. The strawberry plants reproduce from seeds, and then the seeds germinate into seedlings. The seedlings or young plants develop into adult plants. And then the adult plants bear flowers that will become fruits through pollination. Now let's discuss each stage one by one. The first stage is seed production. A seed is made of three main parts, an embryo, seed leaves, and a seed coat. Do you know what is A? A is the food store. It contains nutrients for the new plant that will grow from embryo. Do you know what is B? That's the embryo. An immature plant will grow into new plant under the right conditions. Under the right conditions. What is C? C is the seed coat outer covering of the seed it helps to protect the embryo from injury and drying out
Next is germination. In germination process, it needs the right condition. So the seeds will grow into a young cold seedling. The process is known as germination. The condition required for a seed to germinate are air, water, and warmth. Now, can you compare the conditions required for seed germination with the conditions required for plant growth? Yes, the condition for seed germination, they do not need like. Why? Why the seed does not require the presence of light to germinate? Yep, during germination, seeds do not need like as they are not carrying out photosynthesis due to the absence of leaves. Next is germination of a seed. Let us discuss through this picture. The first one, we can see that the seeds start to germinate and then the roots start to appear and then the shoot appears the seeds leaves provide the seedling with food and then here the leaves appear and then leaves start making food the seed coat falls off as the seed leaves has been exhausted and it will grow bigger and bigger after germination, the seedling grows into an adult plant that bears flowers. Flowers contain the male and female reproductive organs of flowering plants. Let us see this picture. The male organ is called stamen. Stamen consists of anther and filament. Anther produces pollen grains while filament support for anther. While the female organs is called pistol or carpal. It is consists of stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. Stigma is sticky pulp that catches pollen grains, while style is the passageway for pollen grains. While ovary is the part of the pistil that holds the eggs awaiting fertilization becomes the fruit and ovule is the small egg that grows into a seed after fertilization. The flower also has petal. Petal is an active part of the flower that can attract pollinators. Let us discuss about pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the male part of flower, which is anther, to the female part of a flower, which is stigma, of the same species. Pollen grains contain the male reproductive parts. Pollination that happens between flowers from different plants of the same species is called cross-pollination. While pollination that happens within the same flower or different flowers within the same plant is called self-pollination. Now, what kind of pollination there? Look at the picture below. What is this? It is self-pollination. How about this one? It is cross-pollination. Here we go with fertilization. Do you know what's the meaning of fertilization? Fertilization is the fusing of a male reproductive part or cell with female reproductive part or cell. Look at this picture. 
When a pollen grain lands on the surface of a stigma, it produces a tube. The inside of the tip of the tube contains the male cell of the flower. These tubes grow down the style to reach the ovules in the ovary. Inside each ovule is an cell. How they develop? Look at this table. The ovary develop into fruit. The ovule develop into seed while the egg cell develop into plant embryo. Now we are at the end of our lessons today. I hope you can understand and then you can enjoy the lessons today. I'll see you again in the next topic. Bye-bye.